Welcome to lecture three, section two. And today we're going to be talking about string and row values. In the previous lecture, we looked at Boolean and numeric values, and of which we started off with numerics. There are three different types of numeric value. You had your whole number, your floating point number, and complex numbers. Now we're going to look at strings. And the only reason why we're going to include runes here is because strings are made up of runes. And you'll see what I mean. But runes are a little bit weird because by themselves, they're actually numbers. Now, before we jump into the code, remember, get in the habit of checking out the supplemental material. I have additional slides where I try to illustrate what we're going to be showing in code, which is how you break up a string and how those different parts of the string, each character that you can type and represent, gets represented in the computer by a number. So there's the printable character or code point, and that gets represented by a number. If this doesn't make sense, don't worry. Check out the supplemental material. I have some good reading material for you to help break this down. So let's jump into the code. As before, I'm going to start with a directory called lecture03, which is in our section02 directory. And I'm going to create a new file called main.go and write a minimalistic Go program before we can get started. So now that we have our basic main program, let's just write a string and have it printed to the screen. Actually, we wrote a string in our very first Go program when we had anatomy of a Go program. So let's see what it looks like. And there you have it. What we're doing is we're passing a string, and the string here is hello, comma, world, bang, to the print line function. And of course, we know that if we run this, it's just going to print hello, world. It wouldn't print the double quotes because we've seen this before. We can even test it, and we'll test it in a minute. But that those double quotes there are used to delimit our string, which is to say, where our string starts and where it ends. We can also use Unicode characters and we can change world to be world in Chinese. So we'll mix English and Chinese characters. And now we can run our code and we'll see that our Go is going to render this correctly. Now that we know what a string is, you can use double quotes to delimit it. You can enclose whatever you want essentially in a string. We'll see some exceptions just now. But for now, at least we, we know in theory how to make a string. Let's take a look at what a rune is. And a rune is a 32-bit number. And let me just show you, and then it'll make sense. So here I have a character. I have the letter H, and I've enclosed it in single quote. So what is different now? For one thing, this is a character. I cannot put more than one, except again, there's some exception. So I can't do this, for example, because that's not valid. But I can enclose one character in single quote, and I can ask the computer to print that for me. And let's see what we get. And yo and behold, I get a number. So what's going on here? When we use double quotes, we have a string. When we use a single quote, what we're saying is that we have a rune. And a rune is a 32-bit value that represents that character. So let's go back to our code. So here, we have the character uppercase H, and it's saying that the decimal number 72 represent is what you use to represent this character. So even though we type a printable character, it is just as if we have typed the number just 72. And to prove to you that oh, this is really a number, we can do some addition with it. We can say, for example, add 20 to it. And notice I do not get any red squiggly lines because that is really just a number. All right, so enough about this. Let's just stick to looking at runes. And so let's print out what the numeric value or the rune values are for all the other characters in our hello world using the Chinese characters. Okay, so now we have broken up our string and enclose each character in our hello world, with world being in Chinese, characters in single quotes, and now we're going to print it out. And what we should expect, again, numeric value for each one of these. And there we go. Now, we can do other things. We can say, for example, can you print the corresponding character if I were to give you the numeric value? So what would that look like? We can use the printf function from the FMT package. So now what I'm saying here is use printf where I can specify how I want things to be printed out. And I'm saying I'm giving you a number, which is 19,990. And I want you to print that as a character. Notice the percent %c. And then I'm saying, OK, also use the same number and print it out as a decimal, which is exactly what it is, right, an integer. And then here I'm saying print the same number as an hexadecimal. So let's run our program and see what we get. And look what happens. When we tell FMT printf to print our number as a character, it rendered the character representation for that number. Of course, when we say print it as a number, well, we just get the number. 
and then when we say printed in hexadecimal format we also get a number but it's a number in a different numbering system let's talk now about escape characters notice the number i have between so i'm saying print a string followed by the number 10 followed by another string the result when i run this program should not be surprising so let's run it okay so i get exactly what i said i wanted printed out so why did i put a 10 in between hello comma and world well if you remember what we were doing just now we said though that all characters get represented by a number so there is a corresponding character for the number 10 and let's see what that character is so here i've typed a character you know i've typed a character because you see me use single quotes but notice i have two individual characters within there. i have the backslash character and i have the end character each one of which i could in theory type by itself but again exceptions so I can say this, or I can say this. So when I do this, N stands for itself, but when I do this, it's called an escape character, which means I'm given N a special meaning. And you see me use that up here also when I wanted to add a new line, but you didn't know what it was for. Now you can see that I've typed this as a character by itself. So let's run this program and see what is the value of this backslash N character, which is called an escape character and the value is 10. So now you see why I use 10 here because I wanted a new line between here. But of course, if I type the number, I don't get that. If I actually wanted to print as a new line per actor, I have two ways of doing it. So one way is to simply do a string with an embedded new line character. And so now I've embed the new line character within my string and now I'll get the result, which is hello comma space on one line and on a new line i'll get world so let's run it and see and there we go that's exactly what i want and that's what a new line corrected give me so keep in mind when you use a corrector by itself it's a number but if you embed it in a string then the corrector gets rendered okay the representation for that corrector in this case we do not actually see a backslash n on the screen because it's a special corrector called an escape corrector let's see there's some other escape correctors so the last two examples since we're using the backslash to be able to escape other character, give special meaning to other characters, we couldn't possibly use the backslash by itself because a backslash by itself in a single quote would sort of try to escape the single quote. And so in that case, we have to use two backslashes if we want a backslash. And of course, if we want to print that out, we don't want a number, but the backslash itself, we have to use it in a string. Similarly, with single quotes, since we're using a double quote to delimit our string, we couldn't simply just use a double quote within a string because then it would look at the end of a string prematurely. So we'll have to escape it within a string by using a backslash. So let's run our program and see what we get. And we can see that the numeric value for a backslash is 92. But of course, to get a backslash, we have to escape it. And the numeric value for a double quote is 34. So, okay, so you might be asking yourself, where would I find out what the numbers are for different characters without me having to type a character and then run my program to see what the numbers are? Well, just so happened, there's a handy website called ASCIItable.com. And if you go there and you type this in your web browser, you will find the chart for the English ASCII characters. And you can see here that we have the decimal number, the hexadecimal number, octal number, which is yet another number in system, and then the character and their meaning. So some of these you don't really care about because those are for telephone and um, basically modems. But if you look at the one for new line, you see new line line feed, this is 10, which we were using the decimal number. But you could sort of go down the list and you can see the different characters. And notice everything you can type on your keyboard is here and even some things you can't type. And where is our 72? We're using 72 and that was capital H. And we saw 34 just now representing a double quote. So 34, and there it is. And backslash, if we look for backslash, there it is, 92. This is not all. 0 through 127 is not all the possible characters. We also had the Chinese characters. And if you look at the extended ASCII table, well, they just go to 255 possible characters, to the number 255, from 0 to 255, which just gives you a total of 256 possible characters. So where are the Unicode characters? They are here. So you click on Unicode. And then, for example, we were looking at the Chinese-Japanese simplified ideograph. So unified ideograph, if you click here, and if you zoom in, 
and scroll down, you can see the hexadecimal value. So one of our characters was 4E16. And if you scroll down in this table and you look for it, 4E16, here it is. This is where you get all those numeric values. Now that you see where the characters are, so let's go back to our code because there's one other type of string that I want to cover and it's called a raw string. Notice this very long string of type and I've included double quotes within it. That's because we're not using double quotes to delimit our string anymore. Now we're using a back tick and that is the character, depending if you're on a Western keyboard, it's the one preceding your numeric one key. And that allows us to enclose a number of things within the string, anything virtually, and have it print out literally. That's why it's called a raw string because none of the characters within it get interpreted. So let's run our program and see what we get. And of course, because it's taken literally how we've typed it with all the tabs and everything and the new line because it doesn't encode it or do anything special with it, then it prints it literally like that. So we can clean this up a little bit. I know that looks a little better, but notice because we type it on multiple lines, those lines are there. So you want to use a raw string when you want to be able to encode the new lines that you're typing, encode double quotes and so on. Notice I didn't have to escape them. I literally typed the double quotes and they show up. Well, there's still another way we can type long strings, but we have to add them together. So this is called string concatenation. So let me show you what that looks like. Now notice, since I'm using double quotes to enclose my string here to delimit my string, if I wanted to enclose a double quote, I had to escape it. Now, what if I wanted to continue typing even more, a much longer string? So at this point, my string is sort of going past the screen and I might want to put it on multiple lines. So you might think that, oh, I can do something like this. I can just cut my string like this. Well, that is not valid. And the only way we can do this is by concatenate it by saying, this is one string, and I want to use the plus operator to add it to another string. So I can type two strings, and they can be in separate lines, but between them, I must use a plus operator. Not only that, the plus operator must be at the end of the first string. What I mean by that is, for example, if I want to add more to this, and so you might think that I can do this, this also wouldn't work. So I have to put the plus at the end of the previous string. And now I have a valid long string, but notice I had to take care of making sure that I use a plus operator. And if I use embedded quotes, I have to embed them. So now we could run this and we can get slightly different result. Let's see. Notice here, I do not have my new lines in this string because all I've done is concatenated individual string to make a much longer string. I do not have a raw string. So keep those two things in mind. Okay, so that's it for strings and runes. Take care. See you in the next lecture.